Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about soy. Is it good for us or is it bad for us? There's lots of research on both sides of the aisle, and I want to talk about that. Now, in ancient China and India, the humans didn't eat soy products. It was for the feed for the animals. It was never taken by humans. Maybe that should tell us something. Soy has very strong and powerful anti-nutrients, hard to digest nutrients that protect the soybean from rain and from mud and rotting. So it's protected and therefore very hard to digest. And that's the big issue. Some of those anti-nutrients are called phytates, and those phytates chelate minerals out of the body. And many folks say that it can demineralize you and affect your ability to get the minerals and therefore create malnutrition. People on the pro side of soy say they've got research that shows it's been used for, for around the world for areas where there's people have malnutrition and they need more nutrition. So how could it be bad for you? Soy also has goitrogens. It's well known to be a thyroid suppressor. It also blocks the uptake of iodine, which the thyroid therefore feeds. So if you take a lot of soy product, you're going to suppress your thyroid, and you're going to block the uptake of iodine. According to the World Health Organization, iodine is a deficiency that affects 72% of the world's population. So do we really want to take a lot of soy to block that precious mineral? Very, very important. Pro-soy folks have research that says if your thyroid is healthy, it really doesn't matter. Soy is also estrogenic. It delivers a lot of estrogens into the bloodstream, which could be problematic. In fact, four protein shakes, about 100 grams of soy powder, is about the same amount of estrogen you get in a birth control pill. So that's a lot of estrogen. Now you got to remember, so that the iodine actually protects the body from toxic estrogen. I wrote an article called Protect Your Breast talking about how iodine protect the uptake of toxic estrogen into the breast tissue. And how important is that? So if you're taking a lot of soy products, which has a lot of estrogen, and it's blocking the iodine that protects your breast, that can be very important. Now yes, in Japan, they get about 14 milligrams of iodine per day. That's a crazy amount of iodine. They also eat a lot of soy products. So maybe the iodine that they eat in such you know, large amounts is actually being, is helping suppress the thyroid and bringing it back into balance. Maybe their diet is helping to mitigate the amount of tofu and the amount of soy products that they actually eat. It's a very interesting study. People on the pro side say that when you eat soy products, it actually has been shown in many studies to support healthy cellular division. And there's no risk of breast issues when you take soy products. So again, we're definitely sort of, you know, split in terms of the research. One thing that I would say for sure, don't have soy, if you're a vegetarian, be your major source of protein. If you're going to have soy, make sure it's organic. Now, about a thousand years ago, one Chinese researcher figured out a way to ferment the soy and actually break up these anti-nutrients, creating products like tempeh, miso, soy sauce, and a very important product called natto. In fact, natto, soy products, went from being considered a toxin in China to actually being entered into the Materia Medica as a medicine. Natto particularly has an enzyme called uh, natokinase, which is a fibrolytic enzyme which breaks up fibrous tissue. And in the arteries, when you get irritants and toxins in the arteries, and the body begins to lay down fibrous tissue to protect it, and it can affect the diameter of your arteries and create some real serious problems. And we have an enzyme that's called plasmin that breaks up that, that, fiber, that, that fiber and buildup, that fibrous tissue buildup in the arteries. And the natto, which is very rich in vitamin K, actually helps to reabsorb that fibrous tissue in a significant manner, in one study four times greater than the body's own plasma. So having more vitamin K2, which is what the fermented soy has a significant amount of in the form of natto or even a supplement of vitamin K2, is very, very important for the health of your arteries. It also delivers, by the way, the, uh, the calcium into the bone for bone density support as well. So you know, the fermented soy products, definitely eat them and enjoy them. The non-fermented soy products, make sure you, they're organic if you have them and, and eat them as in moderation. Don't make it the major source of protein. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard. See you next time.